So, <laughs> oh, we'll be cutting. So we finally going. Ooh. Recording live, right? Uh, what, what's you get a place of? Where, where we at, man? Range gun and safes in Forest Park. Okay, go ahead, say it again, brother. So we're, we're, we're at range guns and safes in Forest Park. Uh huh. Guns range and safes in Forest Park, Georgia. Yep. So we make sure we give these people some support when we out there and say right near the airport and College Park. This was the meeting between your brother Kifaru and brother Vaughn, right? Yes. So you remember all the controversy that happened, brother Vaughn coming on the show uh, through, kind of came through U, uh, USS Guns, Urban Sharpshooters with our brother James McCoy. Mm -hmm. And we had brother Vaughn on the show and James at that time. Man, we ran into so much red tape about having brother Vaughn. Yep. Not from our straight black prior, because we do straight black survival, so we were open for it, but once we had the brother on, brother Al, remember we were just getting all type of uh, uh, letters and emails of why we having this brother on, he's the most dangerous guy, and all of this nonsense. So, and they're still alive. Still, right. So what we ended up doing was uh, inviting him out, not once, not twice, but three times that he's been on the show. He's got a book out, the book is, I'm reading the book currently now. Um, it's a women's, women's guide to firearms, and it's a great read, a lot of illustrations in there. We're going to have him on to talk about the book, but today was the first time that me and this brother had an opportunity to meet, mm -hmm. both being from Chicago, <laughs> yep. going to the same high school. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same small world. world. That's small dope. world. I got a couple years on it. It's okay. Right? Now, our methods of shooting, a little bit different. We hit targets, yes, but our training is a little bit different mm -hmm. than, than that. I'm uh, more of a competition, match type shooter, been around firearms. Now, Vada is strictly, not strictly, I'm going to say, but he does concentrate heavily on self-defense and gunfight. Okay, that's what I want to call it. It's, it's gunfighting techniques. So, what you saw on camera may not be necessarily for you. It, it may not be something of your preference. Mm -hmm. But he's built a clientele base, he's built contacts up where those people enjoy what he's doing. And here's the thing I said to all the critics. I don't, he's going into neighborhoods, he's going into communities, our communities, black communities, talking to black women, black men, and he is training them on how to defend himself. So I have to salute you on that one. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, visit here. Why you here in Atlanta? What, what's the what's the reason you came here to Atlanta? Well, here, here's the real deal. The reason why I come to Atlanta is because my friend Ronnie, who works at this particular store, hated my guts. I mean, this man hated me forever until one day. I was sitting in the Chinese restaurant here in Charlotte, and he called my phone. And I said to myself, I said, why would this man call my phone? I don't know you. He called to apologize. And I said, apologize? For what? And he said, well, I was talking kind of greasy about you or whatever. I had some bad things uh, to think about you or whatever because all of the haters online, you know. And I say, well, I don't know you for you to apologize to me. You know what I mean? You don't have to apologize. We don't know each other. He say, I'm a man, and he's kind of macho, macho man or whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, I want to apologize. I say, okay, no problem. So ever since then, we've been talking, talking back and forth. And sometimes I come to him with my personal problems, you know, uh, which I'm not going to tell you about here. But I do come to this man with my personal problem because he is a great person. He, he's a little you know, angry at times, but he's a great person. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to come out here because I do to come see my good friend right here, Tariq, and the Black Packers, right? Um, so I said, I'm going to come on out and meet you and spend time with you and train and shoot with you. And I did just that. And he was very happy. And as you can see, I, I have his shirt on, uh, our, our uh, 21 Tactical. Uh, whenever he's gonna decide to not throw anybody out this range, he'll come around this corner. Um, but uh, he's a very good guy, and I suggest you guys train with him. Great train. Safety officer. That's right, okay. train with. He's not oh, a player. Crap. Oh, I thought that was him. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's our brother Al back there. Yeah, this is Mr. Al. Al. Can you guys see him? He's good, right. Yeah. He helps us mm -hmm. do the radio show every Tuesday night. That's the man on the one and twos. Yeah, it takes care of the music and stuff. <laughs> so, sister, let me ask you now. You, yes. What, what, uh, what's your name? Ashley. Ashley. Are yes. you from Atlanta? Yes. Okay. And how did you meet Brother Vaughn? Actually, I met him through the Black Packers crew. Okay. Um, I'm with them. I'm running training with them. How long have you been training? <laughs> This is my third time. Okay. <laughs> so it's like two weeks? Yeah, two like weeks. two weeks. Okay. And, they, yeah. and this is your first time working with Vada yes. as well? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, what do you think so far? I think it's um, great so okay. far. Um, I learned a lot. Um, 
Okay. A lot. Okay. Now I use my journalistic my skills here. Yeah. I don't, let me put you on the spot. Now. Yeah. But we're all family here. Uh, I'm with Straight Black Survival, which is a part um, of Straight Black Pride movement. Yes. Okay. I know um, you. Okay. All right. Good. And. So I appreciate you coming out and having that balance of a female perspective as well. So let's talk about, you didn't get a chance to train with me no, last you got a chance to train with Vaughn. Mm -hmm. And we had two different styles, even though, um, of, of training. Mm -hmm. My personal take on it, it is fast paced. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you're learning, but you're moving at the same time. It's in a sense of putting you in the fire. Right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're going right away. Now, I don't know if he does that from a time-consuming deal, if that's just part of the program, but I can understand it. Most programs are very slow and methodic, okay? Mm -hmm. Going over a lot of safety, uh, a lot of different uh, muzzle awareness, trigger mechanics. You, know, you might take four or five classes even before you get to what he just exactly. did right there, exactly. okay? Mm -hmm. So, for me, first time dealing with the class, because I have gun experience, I'm saying, wow, boy, it's fast paced. Mm -hmm. There's some things that maybe I wouldn't do, but there's some things definitely I got out of it that's going to help me in the future. Now, from Al's perspective, um, kind of first time with Al, um, your expectations or any thoughts of what you'd like to say? Yeah, basically, I'll, I would say uh, I got thrown into it. And I, and I appreciate it, mm -hmm. uh, just to go through that type of experience because uh, uh, when, if, you, if you are in a situation, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, it's going to be obstacles in your way, whether it's uh, you know loud noises, uh, structures, or what have you. So you got to actually put yourself in that particular environment at times so you can be prepared. So uh, as you say, you know, pull the trigger and tell the hammer to hurt. Right. That's my model. Pull the trigger and tell honey, the hammer to hurt. Honey. Um, <laughs> Now, like you said, Al probably gives you the best perspective because it was his first time and he's being thrown into the fire, right? I kind of knew what to expect, even even not to know what I ex to expect, but I knew I could shoot and I knew if something happened, um, how to get out the malfunction and things like that. But let me tell you that malfunction drill, I think is an excellent drill, all right? I don't care what your critics are going to say about that vada. Okay. People don't practice malfunctions. They don't. typically don't practice that. They may have some snap caps and things like that. Right. But I think he put me through five empty shells of malfunctions. Mm -hmm. And when you have a malfunction coming from where I come from, you, you know there's something wrong with the fire. So I'm trying to tune the fire on. Maybe I've got some bad loads or something like that. But when I'm running the stage, if I got that many misfires, something's wrong with my equipment. You know? So, but in a self-defense, you can run into that. What led you to come up with that type of drill? What happened was when I created the EDA ECK shooting platform, which is my proprietary shooting platform, mm -hmm. I said I need to be more familiar with not only just the weapon system itself, because I run a knife and gun simultaneously. So it's like, how do you clear a malfunction holding a knife in one hand? It's not like you got three hands. You know what I mean? Mm. So I said, I'll tell you what, the fastest way, the most efficient way to build the muscle memory is to put a empty uh, shell casing between every round. Do it multiple times. So if you go back and you look and you see me online, you just Google uh, VADA, V-O-D-A, uh, E-D-A, E-C-K, and the video will pop up and Arnold Schwarzenegger is doing my voiceover. You will see the gun is malfunctioning. It's supposed to, it's set up to do that so I can get a feel for what it's like to run that gun and hold that knife at the same time. Uh, as you even seen with the uh, malfunction today, I don't drop magazines. Mm -hmm. You out there fighting, you got these people, that may be your last magazine. Mm -hmm. Why would you drop it? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So retain that magazine, retain that knife and the magazine if you're gonna be running my system. You know what I'm saying? And for the record, I got to say this here. Remember that uh, Navy SEAL who uh, hijacked my style? He you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh you name? want to speak on that? What was his name? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, for you? Oh, you got a spot. No, she's one of my students. Oh, okay. Hi. Now, we get a chance. We want to talk to that brother there, too, when we get, we get opportunity. Oh, yeah, definitely. Was it a, not that blizzard? Was it blizzard? Uh, Rom, no, Dom Rasko, yeah, Dom Rosco, yeah, he from yeah. SEAL Team Six X yeah. Delta, whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, funny yeah. how people will talk smack about a certain drill or a certain practice. Is it because I black? And then six months, a year, year and a half down the line, 
they're doing the same thing, mm. but not giving credit where they got it from. Right. You were just shitting on it, but now you bigging it up because you're doing it. And as my brother... Double standard all day. My brother James McCoy, president of the Urban Shelf Shooters, I let you know I love you, but he will always say this. A lot of people think that the white man cold ice is colder than black people ice. Mm. <laughs> We've heard that one before, right? Just saying. Um, as we continue to work together, what we are definitely showing people, or even though you were a different organization, mm -hmm. we can come together and work. Oh, yeah, yes, most definitely. Yes. Because we got. And we don't have, all have to agree all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're going to have disagreements. We have different ways of doing things, different mm -hmm. philosophies. So, but the fact that we can come together in solidarity and focus on the things that we do agree upon, right. that's key. That's key. Because right. you got three organizations basically sitting here. And the brother here has established his fourth organization because he works here. So we're grateful for the brother. We get him over here and speak to him so he can promote his business as well. Um, that's so key and important because a lot of people don't want you to even talk to them about it, right? So yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Say, hey, you can't. So people are deciding who you can talk to and who you can't talk yeah. to. So I was open enough to say, man, come to the radio station. Let's talk, all right? And here's the format. And Vada, you got to think, the first time you came on the show, mm -hmm. this wasn't a situation where we were going to sit here and, and do a hatchet job. You know, It wasn't set up where uh, we're going to just crush Vada and talk negatively about it. And I'm fine with that. Right? But what we did do, we invited each and every critic of his, anybody to come. I don't think we got one phone call from the opponents about, 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 I think late in that conversation now, there was somebody who called, just wanted to be friends, but none of the people who were doing were, all the talk, all the talk, yeah. called in to say And I would, I would tell you, the people that orchestrate these kind of uh, peer pressure, you gotta understand, I'm a sociologist, so I'm immune to peer pressure, all right, in social conformity, it's like it doesn't work with me. All right, so I'm gonna continue to do. And plus, I come from Chicago. Right. You know, if you're gonna stand on your own, you're gonna die. All right. So this is what it is. So you know, it doesn't bother me that big wigs in the industry like Jim Fuller over at Rifle Dynamics. Oh, yeah, that guy. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna say what my brother call him, but I'm just saying yeah. it's people like him that orchestrates these uh, groups and this. Uh, Ball, mm -hmm. so to speak, to say, okay, this person is cool, this person is no cool. You know, uh, a lot of African American instructors are afraid to speak out because they f they're afraid that the NRA is going to take their license. And you know, let me tell you, when it comes to certifications, a donkey can be certified if he spoke English and shot a gun, right? All right, you get a driver's license and you get a driver's license revocation or whatever, you still drive in your car. That don't mean you know how to not drive. Okay, so the NRA taking my certification doesn't mean I don't know how to run no guns. Okay, it doesn't stop. Continue to keep training. Have faith in yourself. You can do anything you want to do. You put your mind to it, you know. You can do this. We black. I'm going to be honest. We black. We overcome so much stuff in this country. We build pyramids. You can't even build that stuff now. Okay? We've done a lot. When you say gunfight. Yeah. You don't have a lot of people, instructors or teachers are seeing using that terminology. Mm -hmm. No. When you guys hear it, we part of the part of this program too. Uh, oh no. Okay. So we're right here. No worries. All right. Um, gunfire. That what about scare it? a lot of people, right? It does because one of the codes of the NRA is not to use the word weapon in a class. They don't. The NRA doesn't even want you to call it a weapon. Yeah. But it, what's really oxymoric about it is that people buy firearms for personal protection, thus it is a weapon. You see what I'm saying? So they want to play the sportsman role, and it's very uh, unfair to people. You know, you have to look at the premise as to why people own firearms. They own for personal protection, and then come recreation, and then come hunting. You see? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the word gunfighter and all deter you or get you free? No, you actually, it? if anything, it would uh, make me seem, be more interested in it because yeah. firearms or the use of firearms you you in self-defense is a martial art. Mm -hmm. Yep. At the end of the day, it's a martial art. Okay. So, it's just an evolution or a subset of that art. Got you. All right. So, so gunfight, did that, did that, were you afraid when you heard the word gunfight? No, actually because um, what my uncle was, we, I learned how to shoot rifles when I was younger and down and so it, it didn't deter me, um, so I'm okay. used to it. So. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> well, this big meeting that was happening between Vada and Kifaru, it happened today, family. I want to let you know the showdown did happen. And he's we, still alive. We still made it through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the meeting finally happened. And as everyone was trying to anticipate what's going to happen between you and Vala, hey, brotherly love. I got yes. much respect oh. for the brother. Much Back love at you, brother. Okay. So, no animosity. He's nope. a, a supporter of uh, Straight Black Survivor. He's you got that right. Of Vada. Uh, he's always welcome on the show. We're going to have his book review here uh, probably sometime in May based on his schedule. And we'll talk about the book. You want to say anything about the book? I would say this here, <clears throat> if you go to Amazon, okay, granted, I made a mistake, I, I'm, I'm fine with that, okay, I'm gonna make a ton of mistakes tonight when I get this bus going, all right, I uploaded the wrong file to the book, all right, it's a self-published book, all right, like 10 files up there, right, I fixed it, so don't listen to the, the haters comments, and if you look at them, they're all Caucasian, white, and male, all right, the book's not even for them. It's not even for you. It's for women. Just to let you know something, okay? If it doesn't, don't buy the book. I don't want you reading my crap. All right, but get the book on Amazon, The Woman's Firearm Guide, okay? I'm going to hold up a picture and everything like that. 17 bucks, black and white. Don't cost you nothing. Um, leave a comment. Let's counteract this, this terrorism, this cyber terrorism that they do. Okay, leave a good comment. Leave a good review. It ain't going to kill you, okay? They ain't gonna kill me either. All right, so you guys be safe out there. All right, y'all be safe. Brother Kafaru from Straight Black Survival, my brother Al, um, my brother Vada, brother Tariq from USS, and sister Ashley right here. She's part of this whole group, and you can see this establishment. Maybe we'll get the uh, owner or the brother that was here uh, talking a little bit about the establishment here where you can come and shoot. Fantastic range, clean, you got good air filtration system. Everything's A plus over here. Straight black survival, straight black ride. Well, thank you. Cool. Let's go eat some.